big deal. I press the switch. There it goes clockwise. Press the switch. Goes counterclockwise. Press the third switch, and I actually lock the motor. There are things in the manual that are a bit iffy and questionable, and I'll clarify those. Here's a drawing next to it. Here's the connections for the controller unit. This is your power connections. And that drawing further down is your Arduino connections. Here's the three connections up here. I'm not using these switches, but these three switches here are these. All right, this is also taken from the manual, and you note something. This is an example for common anode connection. I didn't use common anode, but nonetheless, the manual keeps saying that enable is not connected. Uh, I'm going to dispute this because my test showed we ran into a problem. If enable is not connected, not only if it's not connected, if it is not kept high when you turn off the motor, that is, if I don't turn enable on, guess what? The power stays on the motor all the time and the shaft is locked. Now, if you want that, that is fine, but I'm going to tell you just sitting there locked for a long period of time, that motor is going to get red hot. So when I, when I programmed this, I programmed it to be enabled only when I want it to move the motor or perhaps deliberately stop it. Now let's look at my Arduino sketch or code. Here I have to define the switches as follows. SW1 is digital pin 2, SW2 is 3, SW3 is 4, direction 5, pulse 6, enable 7, and so forth. Now I've defined CW for clockwise as a 1. The compiler accepts a 1 as a high. And of course counterclockwise, this is related to direction as a 0, that's a low. Also, since it was an Arduino Uno, I used the digital pins 13 LED as a motor on indicator, which is why this is labeled in the way it is. I also defined a, another variable, ROT 360, or rotation 360, at 200. For instance, so that tells me one ROT when I call the subroutine will give me 360 degrees. If you're going to, you might want to redefine this if you microstep it at a different value. Plus an integer X and Y. All right. Of course, here's my pin modes for whatever uh, SW1, 2, and 3. I activated the internal pull-up resistor, so when any of the three switches are open, I will return a high when I read the digital pin. When a switch is pressed, it will read low. Here is my uh, direction pin. It's going to be an output. I'm going to set it low. Pin the pulse pin is going to be an output. I'm going to set it low. And pin mode for the enable pin, ENA, it's going to be an output. It is going to be set high. When it's when by doing this, and I'm not running the program, the motor is turned off, and I'm free to turn the shaft. More important, the motor is not sitting there getting hot. Also, note this variable pulse delay equals 3300. This value is going to be used in a microsecond delay. Why I chose this, the application originally called for 100 rotations per minute. Okay, at 200 steps per 360 degrees, that's something like 20,000 steps in a minute. Um, 20,000 divide... Um, it, it worked out to be 3.3 um, milliseconds or 33 hundred microseconds per step.
That is 20,000 times 3.3 gives you 100, approximately. Let's move on down. Okay, we're down here in loop. This is the little subroutine. When I press SW1, a digital read turns a low, returned a low, and of course it's going to run this little loop program here as long as SW1 is pressed. I'm going to uh, motor on high. That's going to uh, indicate, that's going to turn on my digital pin 13 LED. That tells me the motor is running, or at least the software is running, even if the motor is not. I'm going to take the enable low, so that's going to connect power to the motor. And I'm going to digital write to direction CW. In this case, it was actually a high or a one. And it's simply going to pulse digital, it's going to pulse PUL um, high, then low. It's going to delay microseconds, pulse delay times two. The reason I slowed it down for the demo so you could see the operation a little easier. All right, let's look down here at the CCW switch. When you push the CCW switch, that's SW2. When you push it, it will return a true as long as SW2 is returned. That is a true, or it's going to return a low. That means the switch is pushed. Again, I'm going to activate the little uh, LED uh, digital pin 13 LED that tells me the motor should be running. I'm going to enable motor, motor power with a low ENA. Ah, but the direction is going to be different. That's the only difference between this this per, this section and this section is this one command. Is I set direction. Uh, the direction pin low or zero, then I'm going to pulse high, pulse low, delay, pulse delay times two. This is 6,600 microseconds or 6.6 .6 seconds per step. And it will continue to loop through here as long as I keep SW2 pressed. Okay, let's look at the rest of the code. Um, this little snippet here is going to read the state of switch three. If it is low, it's going to call a little subroutine called lock motor. If it is not pressed, it's going to call a subroutine unlock motor. They are down here and they do nothing but uh, if you lock motor, it's going to come down here, turn on the LED uh, on digital pin 13. That tells me the motor is locked, and it's going to take uh, the enable pin low. And of course, if I release the SW3, it's going to unlock the motor, which is basically this little thing here. It's just going to take enable high. And if you look in here at the rest of the, and that's it. Now, there is another routine that I wrote that's a little more complex. Let's look at that. Let's look at this uh, subroutine motor run. It doesn't return a value, but it has two input variables, count and direction local. Basically, when you call this routine, you're going to put in the num count is the number of uh, 360 degree rotations you want. And direction, it's either going to be CW or CCW for uh, direction. Again, we're going to turn on the L digital pin 13 LED. That tells me the motor should be running. I'm going to uh, enable, I'm going to send enable low, turning the motor power on. And I'm going to change the direction to direction local. Again, it's going to be a, a high or low, which determines the direction. Remember the variable early on rotation 360, I set it 200. Well, I'm going to take the count value and multiply it by 200. 
that's the rotation 360 value and save it back and count then I simply have a for loop here is your delay microseconds you can redefine that for uh, back at the beginning of the program or pulse delay as we originally called it and it's going to count out on this for loop when the for loop is finished it's going to uh, cut off the motor power it's going to cut off the digital pin 13 LED and exit so you could take a string of these commands run motor maybe I want six rotations forward and so forth uh, I'll write that down for you real quick all right let's notice this little code snippet right here this would be back in loop. So you would call the subroutine motor run. I want 10 360 degree rotations clockwise. Then I would want 10 360 degree rotations counterclockwise. Maybe I would want 100 clockwise and then two um, 50 360 degree rotations counterclockwise. Your motor should return back to where it started so this is just give you some ideas and by the way the cost on this little goodie i got it for 12 bucks off of ebay they're cheap um they're quite flexible i'm fairly impressed with mine unless you're going to some unless you just want to learn to build a um h an h bridge motor what a what this thing is when you get down to it it's a dual it uses two h bridge motor controls in tandem to control the two windings so unless you like building all of this or have a reason to do it a module like this is what more likely what you're going to see in industry and this is how they work so that completes this video on the TB6600 stepper motor controller uh, please hit the like button if you would I would appreciate it you can visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com and I'll have the link to this page in the description thank you and have a great day